We're now going to talk about the six losses, which are discussed in section 20. So what is an assessed loss? It's the first question that you have to ask yourself. An assessed loss is a situation where your deductions exceeds your income. Now remember income is gross income less exempt income. So I'm saying this is the amount after taking into account exempt income. Remember section one of the act tells us what income is and that's gross income less exempt income. So if your deductions exceed that, then you have an assessed loss. So as an example, Taxpayer X has an income of 100,000 and allowable taxable deductions of 120,000. So that means if we say income of 100,000 minus deductions of 120,000, that gives us an assessed loss of 20,000. Now, what do we do with that 20,000 assessed loss? First thing that you need to see is that does not mean that you now just take that 20,000 and you multiply it by some sort of tax rate and then SARS has to give you money. So it doesn't create an income for you. What you have to do with that is you will carry it forward and it will be deducted against your taxable income in future years. So as an example, here's year one. That same situation we just saw, we had a 20,000 loss. In the next year, that assessed loss is now called the balance of an assessed loss. That assessed loss is carried forward and it will be deducted against your taxable income. So if the income is 180,000, deductions are 130, you deduct the 20,000 there to give us a taxable income of 30. Now, I'm just making a comment here. You'll see uh, we have to consider a couple of other rules. For example, if it's a company, there's a limit involved there. But this is just a basic understanding. So if you're a natural person, for example, you can set off that 20,000 against your taxable income. So if you, for example, let's say I'm a natural person and I have a salary but I also have a little business on the side, my business makes a loss, I can knock that off against my salary and my other income, for example. Right, there is, if you are a natural person, I'm going to make a comment here now, you might be limited in doing that under Section 20, Capital A, which is the ring fencing of assessed losses for natural persons section. That's something we'll study separately. So I'm not going to discuss it further right now. Okay, so let's jump back in and just talk about these rules. So if you are a company, a company will calculate the amount that they are allowed to deduct there, that 20,000, is calculated by using this limitation here. It says they can deduct the higher of, so whichever one's higher, of a million or 80% of the taxable income before taking into account any assessed loss. Now, all of that means that before taking into account an assessed loss is it tells you that if we use this year two over here, the 180,000 minus the 130,000, so all the other deductions, that's 50,000. That is the taxable income that you would base it on. So 80% of 180 minus 130, so 50,000. So they're just trying to say before you take into account that 20, so not that 30, you base it on the amount before taking into account the loss, which makes sense because otherwise, how would you include the amount and then calculate what the amount should be? Obviously, it doesn't make sense. Okay, so just be aware of that. Any remaining balance is carried forward. So the just the idea is. Um, let's say you had a, a, an assessed loss of a hundred thousand. Okay, just and you apply this. Well, let's make it an assessed loss of one point one million rather, and you apply this limitation over here. And let's say the amount that you are allowed to claim under section twenty is a million. So that's the high of the two amounts. Let's say. That means there's a hundred thousand you haven't used. That hundred thousand is then carried forward, for example, into year three, and you will then apply the same rule there. So it doesn't fall away, you just carry it forward. Okay, then this is a rule that applies only to companies, so not to natural persons, not to trust or anything like that. It tells you that if you do not trade at all during a year, 
then any balance of assist loss that you have is lost. In other words, it falls away. Okay. So what do I mean by that? I've got year one here and year two. Let's say in year two you didn't do anything. You didn't trade at all. And it is now year three. That 20,000 will not be allowed, will not be available to you anymore. So if you have a year in which you don't carry on a business, don't carry on trade, your assessed losses falls away. The reason for this is they don't want a company, for example, what used to happen is we would have dormant companies. So a company would make a loss. And then they would say, okay, this business is obviously not working. Let's stop trading. And then later they would sell the shares in that company to another company and that um, and then they would buy the company with the assessed loss and then use the assessed loss to get the income. They don't want you to do that. So they're saying if you don't trade at all, it falls away. So in other words, if this was year two year and this is actually year three and you don't trade in year two, you don't get that 20,000 in year three. Just a comment on that. You don't have to trade the entire year. Even if you just trade a day or a week or whatever the case might be, you can still claim the loss. It's only if you don't trade at all. Right, then this foreign assessed loss rule here. If you have a taxpayer that has an income from, let's say, South Africa as well as from America, and they make a loss here, you are not allowed to set that loss off against, you carry it forward and set it off against South African income. You can only keep that loss against future foreign income. So if this was in the USA year one, you made a loss. In year two in the USA, you made a taxable income. You could then come and knock that loss off here. So the same thing here, if this was from the USA, and this is from the USA, you are allowed to do what we did here. If this was, however, let's say, the first one uh, that we have there is still the USA, but this was South Africa, you'd not be allowed to do it. That's it.